everybody, welcome back to my channel from Journey Cosplay. And um, this is the last video of the making of Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey. Today we are making her little mallet. This is gonna be tricky because I know a lot of people use cardboard and stuff, but I am a huge fan of the foam. You see it in almost every single one of my videos. I like to use foam over everything. I just think it's a little bit easier to use cardboard you can't really mold and um warbla i've had a lot of really really crappy experiences with warbla so i just don't use it if i don't have to so we're gonna try to make it out of foam i do have some some things so i have a picture of the measurements so this picture says that the top of it is 21 centimeters and that it's 96 centimeters long so today we're just gonna right now we're just gonna start off by making the um, top of it and then i'm just gonna find a pole i have to find something so and then this picture shows me the designs on it close up so these are the two pictures that i'm going to be basing it off of um so i think it'll end up being really fun um if it doesn't work out you know it doesn't work out but this is the last video guys the next video will end up being me getting into the whole thing and showing you guys what it looks like. Probably hating it because I'm not very good at what I'm doing. Um, at least I don't think I am. I think that sometimes I'm good. I digress. So we're going to get started on it. Um, I have some ideas of how I want to do everything, but first I want to start off by like measuring and cutting everything out. So unfortunately that, that first picture I showed you doesn't have how long, how, how like what the um, measurement of the cylinder is. So with that, we're just gonna kind of eyeball and see what happens. So I have this little sheet of thin white foam. Uh, I hope that's enough, but if it's not, I do have a roll from an unopened thicker roll that I got from Michaels when I was making the Songo Boomerang. This is 24 inches by 60 inches by 12 millimeters. And I got it at Michaels. And to help with today's project will also be the modeling foam. So this is basically uh, EVA foam, but in like, but in like, um, like clay form. Is it's? I feel like it, it feels a lot like Play-Doh, is what I think. So let me. This thing is always so difficult to open. I like closed it one time. Oh, I almost got it. Okay, yeah, so it's very play doh -y. I hate it. And it smells weird. So that'll be interesting. So we're going to just kind of get started. I'm going to start off by measuring out what I need, kind of deciding how big I want it to be. And if I have enough of that one sheet of foam, I will cut it all out. But if I don't, then I'll just use the thicker foam and hope that it doesn't look too clunky. So yeah, we're gonna get started on that. Okay, so I ended up not liking the measurements. I felt like it was too small. So what I ended up doing was using the modeling foam thing and kind of using that as a template and like rolling it in this here piece of foam. And then I just added like a couple of inches, like a lot of inches. Because I felt like the way that they were describing it was just a little too small. So I'm not, in a lot of videos, people like put stuff inside of it or wrap like a can or like wrap the foam around a can or something. And I personally just like don't like that. So I'm not going to. Um, I'll probably fill it with like, I have, a, I have a ton of stuffing that I don't use or like miscellaneous fabric pieces or something just to keep, like keep its shape. Um, but first I'm going to start off by like evening out these edges because they're not even and they're supposed to be. So I'm just going to kind of even them out just a little bit. Okay. There we go. Some even edges as, or as even as I can make them. Um, I'm going to use the modeling foam on it so i'm going to start off by rolling this like heating it up first and then rolling it to be um 
and then gluing the edges. And then we'll measure out, we can measure it out with this, but I think it'll be more, um, um, accurate if I roll it and then measure what the circles will be. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up. I'm going to roll it and I'm going to glue it. You guys will join me for this fun adventure. So I use the drill master as my heat gun. Um, it's pretty, pretty simple to use. So I'm just going to heat the whole thing up and then, um, slowly roll it. As you can see, it's pretty already like rolled because the foam was rolled. And then we will use, this is nifty to me. Oh, it's not in there. Just kidding. That was pointless. Sorry. We'll use the 6,000 to glue the edges together. And then once that's dry, we will use the modeling foam to cover the edges. Now, while these are drying, we will make the other edges. So this might end up being parts, but we'll find out. So I put the modeling foam thing in there. It's obviously not going to look, it's not, the edges aren't touching here. So it's going to end up like looking a little wonky, but I just want it to, to be a little bit more round. So we're just, I heated the whole thing up only a little bit though. I don't want it to heat up too much. Um, so I heated it up and um, now we're just going to kind of let it do its thing. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take the modeling foam thing out. I decided to use painter's tape because it just like, this seemed to be the best option to hold it down. Doing this really carefully so that it doesn't like hurt any of the foam. And then it didn't lose its um, shape, which is good, mostly because of the tape, but still. So now we're just going to adjust the painter's tape so that everything is touching. And then we're going to go ahead and heat it up a second time, just like this. just going to kind of let it cool down and then we're going to use our E6000 to glue the edges and then we'll get started on the round pieces here which will help it be a little bit more round than what they currently are. So I'm going to go ahead and base it off of, we're going to remove the top to the thing that I used just to see if that's like a good shape. Oh, these things are so freaking difficult to remove. Okay, just to see if it's a good enough shape that it'll keep the whole thing a little bit open. So this is what we're gonna use to measure out the foam circles because look at how round that is. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna pop that out. We're gonna set this to the side to let it cool. And then we're gonna use the sheet of the rest of the foam sheet that I have to measure out the circle. So go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna press the top into the foam just like that. And then we'll heat that circle around. Boom. And then we're gonna do that a second time here. Press the top. Are you? <laughs> and 
draw the circle all pretty and stuff. Bam. And then we're gonna use our handy dandy scissors to cut these out. these so that they're flat. Bam! Look at those circles! So nice. So now I'm just going to slide this in here to see whether or not it fits. right on the edge just to test out so this little edge is gonna have to get snipped off because it's not even but look at that looking so good bam awesome so we did that now we're gonna move on the foam thing has has cooled enough so I'm gonna remove the painters tape and then I'm gonna prep more painters tape because this piece is done for and the other ones also might end up being done for as well. So I'm just gonna remove pieces of painter tape here. We'll keep this piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna actually just prep new pieces. So we're just gonna I'm just going to do one long piece and then cut it into multiple pieces. The painter's tape is just going to keep it closed while the foam and glue do their work in. So I don't have to hold it closed and I can move on to the next process. Okay. So taking my E6000. And I'm going to just glue one edge. Not a ton of glue. I don't want it really coming out of the edges. But we're gonna we're gonna do this as clean as I can. Alright. Um, I like to make sure that I put the top on my glue before I do anything else because I don't want the glue seeping out. And then we're just going to kind of get the edges going. Okay. Now we're just going to let this dry. For a good couple of hours is when it should be cured and then I can start the modeling foam process. So we're just gonna let that do its thing and we're gonna get started on the next process. So this design is what we're gonna try to achieve today. I did find an Etsy like printout thing that I wanna do um, that has like the designs here and this thing here so We'll see if I end up using them, but I'm gonna go get the things that I'm gonna need to get started on this and we'll get going. So we've got our little circle. It's clearly not perfect. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started on the face. Um, we're gonna use a little, I'm using like a cheap box cutter, but you can use whatever you feel is necessary. Um, and we're gonna heat it up first so that the foam is meldable. And then I'm just gonna use the knife to kind of draw the face.
Look at that happy face. So happy. And the blade definitely cut through, as you can see, which isn't a huge deal to me. So, you know, whatever. So now I just mixed some Artist Loft Raw Umber paint with some water and came out with like a dark color like this, which is what I'm going to use to like make like the, the wood stain on the whole thing. Um, but we're starting with the faces first because they're the most ready. So where did my paintbrush go? Oh, there it is. So I, this is going to take multiple layers for it to look good. So we're just going to layer this on. Ooh, see, it looks good. If you guys didn't notice, I'm doing it on the side that the that the ink got on, um, because then it won't show outside. It'll. Oh wait, I didn't do that this time. I did that with the other one though. Oh no, I didn't. Just kidding. I'm not smart. But if you guys do this, it would be better to do it like this rather than like this. If you guys lose the mark. But it doesn't really matter because no one's really going to notice. It's gonna be covered in paint, so. bring along the first guy I did test all of this stuff this one looks more rugged because my blade wasn't sharp but I changed my blade before I did the second one so that one looks doesn't look nearly as rugged so this is what it looks like you can see there's barely any color so we're like I said we're layering it on until it gets just a little darker and then we'll use regular brown paint to kind of add some of that um, extra adage but I don't want the paint to end up being too dark. And I don't have white. So for some reason, I don't have white paint. So we're just gonna layer it on in between drying. While these both are drying, we will work on the other piece. You can paint the um, brown on first if you want to, then it won't get in between these crevices, but those crevices will be painted black, so it doesn't really matter. Black kind of covers almost everything. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this dry over here with the with its little pal. And bring out this dude. We're gonna remove the paint, the tape, as best as we can. I'm sure that some glue got stuck to it. Bam! Look at that. That was a smooth ass peel. Oh no. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, before we get into painting this guy, we're going to add molding foam to it. You guys remember the molding foam? It's my best friend. I hate molding foam, but you know, it's it can be really useful in times. So, we're just going to add the molding foam to the edges here so that way it doesn't look absolutely atrocious. I'm gonna start off by cutting this little um, overlapping edge so that it doesn't overlap nearly as much. I'm not worried about it looking rugged, so I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to my crossplays, which is probably my downfall here, but I'm just kind of chilling. It took me a while, I was a perfectionist for a while, but um, I realize that every cosplay is unique, which I say in almost every single of my videos, is that make the cosplay your own. Who wants to be like every other cosplayer when you could be like yourself? Bam. Little ring can go. Woo. Okay. Now we're just going to use the foam. Oh, this is so weird. Okay. We're gonna use a popsicle stick to get it out. I have a thing for popsicle sticks. Woo! Don't fall there, guys. What are you doing? So I just like to mold it in my hand a little bit. And then I'm gonna start from the middle and go out. So I put my hand into it, and then I'm just smoothing this out. 
as nicely as I can. You can remove some foam if that becomes a necessary thing. I just like want the edge to be a little mysterious, you know, like me, a mysterious woman. Ugh, this is not working how I wanted it to. How obnoxious. I hate when that happens. That's as good as it's gonna get. So we're just gonna keep going. I'm holding this in my hand a little bit. I'm gonna start from this edge. Now I'm going to use my super sharp blade to grab some of this extra modeling foam that we don't want out here. Lift it up. Oof, this is not looking my best, but you know what? We're working with it. We're doing what we can. We're not all professionals here, guys. I'm just an amateur who loves to do this. With modeling foam, you do kind of have to work fast. And I'm just cutting off some of these edges that like decided they were gonna lift. I think we're just gonna let this dry and then we can cut off more of the rising foam as we go. Let me see if I can cut any of the edges off with scissors. Okay, we're just gonna let that sit. It's as good as it's going to get. With modeling foam, you really have to work fast. So we're gonna let that sit. And we're gonna go ahead and get back to our little circles. The circles will also give you kind of an idea of how I'm going to do the um, the roll. See kind of my process of what I'm gonna do. I'll still film it, but you know, you could probably go ahead of me now. It's dry, I'll decide whether or not it needs more layers. If it does, I will add them. If it doesn't, then we'll get started on the next piece. So, yeah. So I had a bit of realization that the wood wasn't gonna look like this. It was gonna look more like this. So I sat down and I just kinda made these cuts and I'm gonna show you guys kinda how I did it. So, trusty exacto, exacto boxer thing. And then I literally just went at it. So I really am just going at it here. Just putting little slices of heaven wherever I want them to be. And then just digging underneath that really pulling it out and then I add another layer of paint making sure that the paint gets into these little crevices though they'll get painted black some of them like the big one here will get painted black them dry and then add some detailing and it'll be great all right everybody the last part for these nice little side panels is the black and the red accent I did it on the first one 
And this is what it looks like. I think it came out pretty nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I'm doing on the second one. So I'm starting off with Mars Black from Liquitex Basics and a woo in a thin, very thin little brush. Grabbing a little bit on there. And I'm gonna fill in these little things. All of them will get filled in with black. Just looks a little darker that way, like a little bit more twisted. So, going all in with black. That's what those come out to look like. You can definitely see them, more depth and dimension. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get started on filling in these little star eyes, X eyes, stars. Where did I get that? I just fold it over the slightest bit so that way I can get in the crevices. Bam. Now we're gonna do the smiley face next. The smiley face isn't gonna need nearly as much just because it's not like, so I just like to stick my brush in there and do this a little bit just to give it a little bit more dimension, but it doesn't require it nearly as much. Next, I'm gonna go over each of these lightly with some paint just so it comes up and looks a little bit more depthy. Perfect. Okay. That's the start of it. Next will be the red, but we're gonna let the black paint dry and we're gonna move on to the next thing. So the modeling foam is pretty much dry and I did try to like cut the edge, but it was getting a little too difficult and annoying. So um, we are gonna skip that and we're just gonna move right on to painting it to look like the dark brown. For this, I will be using a thicker brush so that we can get more of it. I am going to cut this little extra piece of foam that I have at the top so that it's straighter. Bam! Done. Now we're just gonna get started on the painting of it. So I've got the brown paint water mixed up. I've made this just a little bit darker. Added a little bit more paint, so we're just gonna see how that affected it. It didn't really affect it in a bad way. It definitely will require less layers though, so that's good. Thank God. kind of see the design that the tape left which is fine um, some of this will get covered in uh, a different separate design Just gonna let that dry and we'll paint on a second coat when it's dry okay so 
the smiley face is pretty much dry, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the red. I'm using Crimson from Artist Loft. I love this color, it's kind of an obsession of mine. And we're using a little bit bigger of a paintbrush than we did with the black. Oh, get down eye level to it. And then just outlining where the black ends. Bam. First eye done. Next one to go. straight to the smile. Look at that smile. He's so beautiful. so proud of how these came out so look at us go just pounding through this okay so this is where I'm at with the, with the thing the white molding foam doesn't seem to want to hold the color so I think that I'm gonna stick the uh, pole through this um, but yeah it's almost done ready for the designings I'm really excited Okay, so it's painted brown nicely, except for this part. The modeling foam apparently doesn't like to hold the paint, so which is fine. So now we're getting on to the part where we glue on the panels. This one I've already done, just to kind of see how I'm going to do it. It's a little complicated of a process, so we're gonna do that to the other. I've got the second panel here, and this little side. We're gonna put some, I don't know, stuffing maybe? Plastic bags probably will be better. So I'm gonna go grab some plastic bags. So I've got this brown paper bag full of bags. Um, I am gonna let the glue here cure just a little bit longer before I stuff it with bags. So we're gonna wait a couple of minutes, put the bags in, and then glue on the second one. So I had a little bit of a realization. I had to go to Michael's early this morning. So I realized that I didn't have a handle for the, um, for the mallet. So I went to my, I went to um, Ace Hardware and I grabbed a one by 36 inch. So it's one around and 36 inches down. Um, it's a wooden dowel that I got from Ace and I'm just painting it blue. I'm using uh, Liquitex Ultramarine Blue. I love this color and I think it kind of fits perfectly. So I'm just painting on the color. going inside of the mallet so I didn't bother painting it blue 
So we're just gonna kind of let that hang out over here and let it balance. It will not. That is okay. So I've already cut a hole in the mallet and I decided I didn't want to do anything else until this was painted and um, ready to be slid in. So after the paint has dried, we're gonna paint the bottom, the top here black and then the bottom black as well for it to look like the illusion of like a handle and stuff. So I'm just gonna set that there. Make sure to clean your brushes, guys. You guys don't want to ruin your brushes by keeping them stuck. So while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and get started on adding texture to the um, to the mallet piece. So it's gonna sit like this since the hole is down here. I decided that this was so bad, I really didn't like it, so I just used this as the bottom part of the mallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this into the slot it's supposed to be in, but I'm not gonna glue it yet. I have to be extra careful though because it might be a little bit too difficult to take it out once it's in. So I'm just gonna slide it in like that and then it'll make this just more rounded. You can see the shape of it has like significantly gotten better. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on painting this design. Um, this design onto it, the red and white. Um, I'm gonna start off with the white. So I went to Michael's and I got this huge bottle of Craft Smart White. I got it for like $8, $9 maybe. Um, and we're just gonna tape off the section of the um, foam that's not gonna get painted white and then we'll get it all white and stuff. So I've officially taped off the part that's gonna be painted white, poured myself out some white, gonna use the super thick brush and paint on the white as carefully as possible because painter's tape is not really the most reliable thing in the world. So. I'm gonna start with the edges. I'm sticking my hand inside of it so that I can roll it as well as I don't have to hold it. drying we're gonna get started on the next step so the next part for the wooden dowel for my hammer for the mallet is gonna be adding the black so this is gonna be where the mallet where the top gets stuck into the mallet so I'm just gonna add some paint to it for the illusion that it's um, got those black accents to it I'm using again Mars black from Liqu Liquitex basics I'm just going to apply some black paint.
gonna slide that to the side so that it can dry. And then do another coat of white on this, on this guy. just use like a pen to kind of like hand draw where I wanted everything to go. I've got my red paint ready. I'm using Crimson from Artist Loft. It's what I used for all the other red accents. So I have a little square brush and now we're just going to color in this, these middle diamonds, not the triangles or the accents or whatever you want to call them. I'm like going to try to stick as close to the line as I can. So I can also cover the pen markings. So now that I've got the diamonds on, I'm gonna let them dry, add a second coat, and then that's gonna be it for these beauties. So we're gonna let them dry, give them a second coat, and then we're gonna glue in the hole into the hole, um, fill it up with plastic bags, and then glue the second panel on. And then we will be done. Oh my gosh, this is so long. Okay, I'll see you guys when we're ready to glue this in. All right, look at how neat these diamonds are. Woo! Now I'm gonna use my E6000 glue and the handy dandy little pipe, and I'm going to glue the top of the pipe with some E6000 and then slide it through the hole. Okay, 
you only because the glue is not completely, the paint has not completely dried. So, and then I always like to put the top on before I do anything else with this. Here's the hole. And I'm just going to slide it in gently. Ah, well that wasn't very gentle. And then on the other side, I'm just going to press it. Where I want it to be placed. Next, I'm going to use some E6000 in the circle thing. So I'm just going to kind of bring it out just a little bit. I see where the glue will go. So I'm just going to add like a little bit around. And then I'm going to push it back in. And then I'm just going to let it chill there for a hot minute so that it can kind of do what it's want, do what it wants. While it's doing that, straight up vibing moment for everyone, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the um, second panel. So I'll move this over so that you guys can kind of see. I'm gonna slide it in just to kind of get that, that mold going. This one's going to be more difficult because I can't put my hand in. Ah. So we're going to go ahead and stuff it with a plastic bag now. I am going to have to kind of like maneuver it around the pipe. And now we're going to go ahead and place the panel. Okay, now that I know that, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it out. And this time I'm going to apply the glue to this here edge. I'm not applying a ton of glue. I'm just applying the smallest amount I can that will still glue it down but not make a bunch of glue come out of each of the edges. Okay, and then we're gonna pop it in the best that I can. Oh my gosh, I've got glue all over my fingers. You know what? That was not a terrible job. Look at how that turned out. It turned out so good. I love it. I think it came out really nice. Um, uh, there are some things the painter's tape stayed on for a really long time, so it did remove some of the paint, which is no big deal because you can almost barely even notice if I hadn't pointed it out. I don't know if you would have noticed, um, but oh my goodness. Oh, there's supposed to be a black stripe around here, and I will add that, but I think this looks so good. I could live without the stripe. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you find it very informational. How you say that? Well, informative. And I will see you guys all next week when I put the whole cosplay on. It's gonna be so exciting. I'm excited. I hope you guys are. Peace out.